Number 54. Near the end of a marathon race, the first two runners are separated by a distance of 45 meters. The front runner has a velocity of 3.5 meters per second and the second a velocity of 4.2 meters per second. Letter A. What is the velocity of the second runner relative to the first? All right, so down here I have a little picture. Here's the second runner running at 4.2 meters per second. Here's the first runner running at 3.5 meters per second. The second and first runner are separated by that distance of 45, and the distance to the finish line from the first person is 250 meters. That's gonna be given in letter B. So let's take a look first at letter A. So we have to find the a velocity of the second runner relative to the first. Anytime we're talking about relative velocities, you're going to want to consider this formula on the right-hand side. All right? And uh, the A and C and B, they all just represent um, any item you like. So what do I mean by that? So what we're trying to find is we're trying to find the velocity of the second runner relative to the first. So according to my formula, this S is the A and this F is my C. So that should be equal now, then, the velocity of the second runner relative to B. Well, what is B? It doesn't sound like we have anything else in the problem, but we do. All of these given velocities that they gave us, the 4.2 and the 3.5, those are velocities of those runners relative to the Earth. Right, so the B there is actually Earth in the problem. All right, that's the third um, variable. So the... First term here is the velocity of the second runner relative to the Earth, because that's the B value, plus then the velocity of the Earth relative to the uh, first runner. Okay, so E here represents my B. And as we can see, this all works out now according to the formula B, and then this is C. Okay, so let's start plugging some stuff in if we can. So we want to find the velocity of the second runner relative to the first, and that should be equal to the velocity of the second runner relative to the Earth. Well, that's the value that they gave us. That's the 4.20. Okay, great. Now, plus, I have to find the velocity of the Earth relative to the first runner? What? But how can I even do that? Well, what is this number that they gave you, 3.5 meters per second? Well, that's the velocity of the second runner, excuse me, of the first runner relative to what? right, relative to the Earth. So then remember this little uh, truth that the velocity of AB will always be equal to negative velocity of BA. So if I know the velocity of the first runner relative to the Earth, then that means that I also know the velocity, which is just the inverse of it, right, the, neg the uh, negative version of it, of the uh, velocity of the Earth with respect to the first runner. So basically, the term here is actually going to be 3.50, but negative, 3.50. And now you can see how the math is going to just work out. And that should kind of make intuitive sense, right? You might have said, well, why did you go through all that mumbo jumbo? I know that the velocity of the second runner relative to the first should have, I should have just subtracted them. Yeah, it's easy, but I want you to learn how to work this formula when the problems get a little more complex. You're going to need it. So we got 4.2 minus 3.5. And that's 0 0.7. Easy, easy. So 0 0.70 meters per second. Okay, great. So we got that relative. Okay. So uh, letter B now. Uh, if the front runner is 250 meters from the finish line, as we've shown, uh, as it's shown in the picture, who will win the race, assuming they run at a constant velocity? Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at each runner individually. Remember, this is the second runner and this is the first runner. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna calculate the times that it will take them each individually to complete the race. And then I'm gonna compare the times, all right? So let's first look at the second runner. His velocity is 4.2, right, zero meters per second. The distance or the X displacement that he or she has to travel is going to be what to the finish line? Well, it's gonna be the 45 meters, right, plus the 250. So that means that they have to run a total of now 295 meters, right? Okay, so that's the total distance they have to run. So I can easily now solve for time, right? Just simply use the V is equal to X over T formula. So the velocity here was 4.2, zero, 
right? The displacement was 295 and over time. So just do your cross multiplication. So T is equal to 295 divided by 4.2. And it's gonna take this individual about 70.2 seconds. So 70.2 seconds. Okay, that's for the second runner. Now let's look at it for the first runner. Okay, label the knowns. We know his or her velocity, right? It's 3.50 meters per second. Um, we also know that displacement that the first runner has to travel is only 250 now. So we can easily solve for the time. Again, V is equal to X over T. The velocity is 3.50 is equal to 250 now over T. And now, oh, not X, but T. So now all we have to do is just simply do a little cross multiplication and it's gonna be 250 divided by 3.5. So we get a value of 71.4, 71.4. So, if the clock starts at the same time for both the second and the first runner, the first runner is going to cross that finish line first. Excuse me, the second runner is going to cross that finish line first because the time is less. So, to answer the question, um, who will win the race? The second one uh, runner wins. All right, perfect. Then letter C now. So here, let's take a look at letter C. So now, what distance ahead will the winner be? when she crosses the finish line. So basically what we want to do is, this is the time, right, in which the second runner will win. So let's figure out where the first runner will be at 70.2 seconds, okay? So the velocity of that first runner is, actually, let me just put it in red, okay, since we're doing it for the first runner. So the velocity of the first runner is the same, 3.50. The displacement, that's actually what we're looking for in this case, and the time is gonna be 70.2. So now again, V is equal to X over T. The velocity is 3.5, right? Zero is equal to X over 70.2. So simply just cross multiply. So we got 3.5 times 70.2, 245.7, I got a round, so it's 246, okay? So it's two, oops. So it's going to be 200, 246 meters. So that's where the first person will be, right? So they're going to be all the way over here. They're going to be like right, say right about here. They're going to be so close to the finish line, but not there yet, right? Because they have traveled now 246 meters. So if they had 250 meters to go, and when the second person crossed the finish line, they were, they covered only 246 meters. How far ahead then is the winner that just crosses the finish line? Meaning what's this distance right in here? It's easy, right? We just do the subtraction, 250 minus 246. Okay, and that will come out to be four meters. All right, so that is the answer to letter C. So that's the distance ahead the winner will be. The distance, the uh, first runner will be four meters ahead. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe and tell everybody about the best channel you found on YouTube. All right, thanks.